My name is Winter. I use they them pronouns. I identify as non-binary and I'm 28 years old. I am from outside Atlanta, Georgia. I was born in Alpharetta and spent most of my life in a small town called Snellville. I am the founder and editor-in-chief of Posture Magazine. We are a magazine and creative agency founded upon the need for diversity and inclusion in media and advertising. So as a platform, we bring women, queer people, and people of color to the front and specifically focused on highlighting emerging and established talent in the arts and fashion industries. I feel like I've always questioned my gender and always had a problem with gender stereotypes and the binary and I didn't really actualize myself until college. It was about junior year when I came out, realized I was attracted to other non-binary people and girls at the time, <laughs> lesbians in college. It took me a few years. I identified as a lesbian until moving to New York City after I graduated from the University of Georgia when I started to be around more people like myself, had the opportunity to figure out my personal style and where I felt comfortable and definitely realized that I was struggling with a certain amount of gender dysphoria. Realized that non-binary definitely felt the best for me and when I started using they pronouns it was like something just really really clicked. I'm neither gender. I have no idea what it feels like to be a woman or a man and I don't want to be either. I just want to be myself. I haven't really explained to my family that I'm non-binary. I have explained and had the conversation to my family about what non binary is. Actually something that helped that was my family loves Billions with Asia Kate Dillon who's the first non-binary character and they were like confused. I explained to them what non-binary meant and why they use they pronouns so they know what non-binary is but they still misgender Asia on the show. They're cool with the fact that I'm queer. They don't ask questions and they don't want to know. Fashion and expression is very helpful for my dysphoria. I generally do bind which really helps me a lot. I will hopefully get top surgery in the next 12 months. Months. Working out helps me a lot. Being around other non-binary people. Drag, in essence, is just, you know, mocking gender. So it's just, it's just an art form meant to have fun and also help people with their gender expression. And also a lot of people start with drag and then eventually come out as non-binary and trans or not. But I do think that drag is a performance that helps people and it's like a very healing thing for a lot of people. I don't think that anyone should own drag. I think it should be for everyone. I struggle a lot with what it means for me to be feminine and femininity in general and like things that were I felt really pushed on me so seeing drag and feminine mockery is just like a very complicated for me personally so it's not my I don't go to it as any form of release for my mental health there aren't a lot of spaces in New York City that are ongoing safe spaces for me like it's always parties and they rotate venues so there are a lot of amazing DJs and performers who put on great parties and that's how New York and I feel like a lot of cities are especially for AFAB people there just aren't that many spaces I I feel like this one's always hard for me because you want to say like just be yourself and just do it but obviously it comes with a lot of risk so it's hard for people with a form of privilege to be like just dress how you want and do what you want because that could be a life or death situation but if you are able to explore I think that's what it is it's just finding community and even an online community of people to talk to you think you're alone but you're not there's millions of people like you and I found that really comforting when I moved to the city especially if you live in the Midwest and you you have no one like online can be an incredible resource natural evolution like I did and like a lot of people do is you go to extremes you're like I'm gay now so I'm gonna dress like super super masculine and try this like certain type of gender performance and try this on or and then you get tired of that and you go to the other extreme and you're like I'm gonna be high at bound and like and I think it's okay to allow yourself to play to understand that you can be in the middle and you can combine different things and the way you perform can change what we all struggle with is internal misogyny and really overcoming that is a lifetime of work and that it infiltrates everything write about your experiences and document it and use Instagram don't get sad I don't know. like everyone a lot of queers suffer from depression therapy too is another thing that a lot of youth need you need a safe space to talk to somebody so if you can access therapy I also think that's really healthy and there's nothing wrong with that either do you realize how beautiful and important you are I try to tell myself this but it is hard I feel like I hear on a daily basis because of the magazine and producing shoots and I'm around queer people like people say I hate myself so much and I say that too and now that I'm seeing other beautiful talented queer people say it I'm like wow we all need to stop saying this about ourselves because these like really stupid cis people are running around like so confident and <laughs> able to take over and queers are so self-deprecating
self-deprecating and have so much baggage and emotional weight. So I don't always realize if I'm important or beautiful. Through finding my gender expression, I've definitely become a lot more confident in myself. Yeah, working on that. I feel like I rambled a lot. <laughs>